Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Whenever I start a lecture or a katha, what I do is I ask for assistance from the Creator and I do it through a Mangala Charn. Mangala Charn means Jokos Mangana. Before the Charn means the feed, the sacred feed of the Creator. So you do it through Shabd. And that's what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to blow Fateh again, and then I'm going to go into what the topic of today is, okay? Guru Nanak Pad Pank Jivandhan Pad Pank Jivandhan Simro Ang De Dukh Nikandhan Amr Das Gur Hire de tiavo ji, hire de tiavo. Gururam das gunagavo. Gur arjan beganan ke nasak, beganan ke nasak. Sri har gobind sub samat prakashak. Sri Har Rai Namo Kare Jori Namo Kare Jori Sri Har Krishna Manai Bahori Teg Bahadar Param Kirpala Ji Param Kirpala Sri Guru Gobind Singh Bisala Taro Tara Pare Pona Pona Si Saji Pona Pona Si Sa Bando Bare Bare Jagadi Sa Dora Jisme Amrit Gyan He Manik Pagata Virag Guru Granth Sahib Udd Bando karyan raag salok Dandot bandhan anik baar Sarb kala samrath Dolan te raakho ho prabhu Nanik de kar hath Dolan te raakho ho prabhu Nanik de kar hath Kahaan budh prabh tuch hamari Baran sake mehma jo tihari हम ना सकत कर सिपत तुम्हारी आप ले हो तुम कथा सुधारी फिर आप जोड़ के आपको जी वाहे गुरुजी का खासा वाहे गुरुजी की पते So the objective of today is to become familiar with गुरु तेग बादर साहब जी के जीवन and we understand we know that when अकाल पुरख sent his jyot down, manifested. He went through 10 bodily forms and then the 11th being shabd form, the sound. The current, or you can say, the resonance of Akal Purk, the words that he uttered, is forever maintained in Tant Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So, when we look through Tant Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, you hear the Bani jyot roop har aap, Guru Nanak Kahai, that the light himself, the Lord's light, was called Guru Nanak. Right? And you would understand this if you go into Guru Nanak Dev Ji's life of why that Shabd Nanak came about, and that was the name that was set. So now you have the name set as Nanak, and when you go through Guru Granth Sahib Ji's Shabds, there will be Mahalla Pella, Mahalla Duja. Mahalla means the second house, the third house, the fourth house, bodily house. But the light is always Nanak. The Shabd will always end with a Nanak Pad. Nanak Pad means the title of Nanak will end. Meaning the light forever is the same Guru Nanak Dev Ji's Akal Park light. But the Mahalla or the house can change. And that light is now moving through different forms because just as we see perfection in the number of 10, we see that whatever God was going to do on this world, make the path for those that want to walk on the path, then it was going to be perfect. 
10 is considered still to this day as a sign of perfection. And our Guru Sahibs came in 10 forms. A very, very difficult task to do because what happens is when one person who's considered holy, then once you get to the second generation of that, that individual, people bicker and fight because they see the followers, they see money involved, and then there's a fight for somebody to go in that position. And we're going to see that today in Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji's life. And watch how everything surpasses that. How Guru Maharaj Ji transcends all of that. Especially with the birti or the condition, mind's condition that Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji showed the world. That being unattached, because there's a greater attachment. Right? Unattached to worldly possessions because there's, there's always going to be attachment. You attach to Paramatma, then what happens is worldly attachments start to dissolve away. Meaning that if somebody, if somebody needs something, you're more willing to give it to them. Right? So the, the trik, the date that Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji came in the bodily form is coming. His avatar date is Visak Vadi Panjami. And that's Bikrami Samit. Bikrami Samit is acknowledged in Guru Granth Sahib Ji because we hear Shabds such as Avan Athatre Jan Satanave Horbi Utsi Mardka Chela. So those are dates according to the Bikrami Samit. In order for us to figure out what the date is according to our calendar, we just subtract 57 years. Okay? So, but this is a lunar calendar, Bikrami Samad. So you can hear it in the name, Vesak. Vesak is the month, right? Vesakhi, when you guys are all familiar with Vesakhi, Vesak is a month. And Vesak, Vadi, Vadi means when the moon is waxing, is growing larger. On the fifth date of the waxing moon in the uh, month of Vesak, in 1678 Bikrami, which comes to 1621 in the years that we go by. Tan Tan Sahib, Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji graced the form, or I should say the light of Paramatma came in the ninth form, in the form of Tan Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji in the place of Amritsar. And that place is a short distance from Sri Harmandir Sahib. Sri Harmandir Sahib that you guys are all familiar with, right? Just a short distance, probably 10 minute walk, you can come to Guru Ka Mahal. And when you come to Guru Ka Mahal, you'll find the spot where it's preserved, where Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji uh, came in the bodily form, in the form Jithe Prakash Hoya, where he came as a child. And the time that Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji would leave this world, Right? Or leave the ninth cloak or the ninth body would be Magar Sudhi Panjvi. That was the date that just went by this week. Magar in the month of Magar Sudhi means the waning moon. There's one when the moon grows big, one when it wanes. So the waning, the fifth date of the waning moon in 1732 Bikrami Samat, and that corresponds to R in the years that we go by, which is 1675. That would tell you that Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji in the form of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji Akalpurk came for 53 years, 7 months and 15 days Tan Siri Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji would bless this earth and bless the beings and bless the very Tarti where he would walk okay and a Samkali or a person during the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji Kavi Sanapatha said Pragat pay gur teg bohadar Pragat pay gur teg bohadar Sagal srist pe jaki chadar Commonly we know that Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji is referred to as Hindi chadar But Kavi Sanapat who was out of the uh, Kavis Maharaj had uh, 48 Kavis um, in his Darbar Kavi Sanapat was one of them and he wrote this during the time of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. He said, Sagal Srist, meaning for the whole world. What Maharaji had done is going to play as a testament to the world that Kurbani Deni, a sacrifice being made, not for your thumb, to save another person's thumb, 
to save somebody else's um, freedom to worship what they want to worship, right? Not bullying, not forcibly changing people, not turning people and converting them. No, that doesn't fall into the tenets of Sikhi, right? That's not in the code of conduct of Sikhi because we will forever remember the sacrifice that Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji did. And during those early ages, you start seeing this within Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji. When he was just a young child, he was the youngest of five brothers with one sister. The eldest brother was Baba Gurditta Ji. Baba Gurditta Ji, he's the father of uh, Sri Guru Hararai Sahib Ji, who would be the seventh Guru Sahib. Baba Gurditta Ji, it's his wedding day. On his wedding day, the mother of all these five brothers and sister, which is Mata Nanki, Mata Nanki has dressed their children just like people do on wedding days. They get themselves nicely decorated up and they have these nice pushak, uh, or you can say clothes set aside for the children. And Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji Nubi Ek Pushak Pahnaya that they placed, um, got him to put on a, a robe that was befitting of that day without a Mata, mata Nanaki Nikita. So what Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji does is while he is walking along, his brother who's on top of a horse during uh, the point, the wedding parties arriving at the place where the marriage is going to happen, there's, there would be a lot of children that are poor that would come and see the procession. And in the procession, as Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji is walking, he sees a child that's naked, that has no clothes on. And when he sees the child, he turns to the child and he says that, that why are you not wearing any kapare? He says that I, I don't have any kapare. And he says that why uh, didn't your mother dress you? He says, what is a mother? The child said, what is a mother? Because he's probably an orphan and never seen his mother since the day he was born. He's grown up and he doesn't know who his mother is. He says, what is a mother? And Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji's heart went out to him. And what he did is he took his pashak, he took his robe or chola I should say, and took that chola and placed it on that child. And when he would come back and Mata Nanaki sees him, she says that, like, Bache, where did you kapre go? He said that this one child needed a mother. And that motherly sense that Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji provided for the child is Odi Patitak Diti. Meaning with his robe, that meaning that you're going to be the chadr. What does the chadr represent? Something that covers your path, that covers your honor, right? Covers, covers you. And in the same manner that Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji did, is what he showed at a young age, is that he's going to do something great. And he's already foreshadowing it. He's already showing it in his life. So it's with his kirpa that that chadr, he gives shelter, he gives honor, and he covers that entire cre creation. So as Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji is growing up, when Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji, his father, the sixth Guru, would sit at Akal Takht Sahib, in Amritsa, right before Harmandir Sahib, you can see um, uh, the Gurdwar known as Sri Akal Takht Sahib, and there Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji Subha Iman Hundesi Maharaj would uh, sit in his glorious fashion and then what would happen is that all the all the six children used to come according to age and they used to matha take to Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji every day and there was Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji who would come and since he was the youngest of the five brothers he was following behind the five brothers and then there was the youngest which was Bibi Viro she would be behind everybody. And when Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji would come, there would be certain times that Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji takes Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji after he matha takes and he places him on his lap. Now imagine uh, people watching this. Why did he pick him out versus the other brothers? That's what people would question. Right? And Mata Nanki one day addressed this, that I see that you show love to him. It's our child. Sanu khushi hundi hai. 
that you're showing love to Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. But why are you showing love to him particularly? Why are you looking at him versus the other children? Guru Argobind Sahib Ji says, hey, the which ki, meaning that there's a deeper meaning within this, but you won't understand. But she does a bainti again, that Sache Pasha Zurur Khoke Daso, that please open up and explain to me because I'm very curious. And then at that time, Guru Argobind Sahib Ji explained that, that his, because what Maharaji would do is, oh, the Serpalo Stir and Desi, that he would take his hand and I fear lend him this year over the head of Guru Tegh Bhadra Sahib Ji and time to time he would kiss his head he would explain to Mata Nan ki tu jaandi ni ek tharam da thamma you know what a thumb is? a thumb is a pillar back in the day old structures would the roof would be kept up by pillars he says Nan ki e thamma tharam di that tharam is the roof and tharam is gonna collapse down tharam is righteousness the, the right act according to what God has uh, seen to be done on this earth. Right? That righteousness is going to be upheld by this pillar and by this head. But he wouldn't go further to explain to her. But he would say that Another occasion and this being after the Gurta Gaddi, the Guruship of Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji having the Guruship and he's given it to his grandson. And Mata Nanaki now becomes concerned and she says that, well, she knows that now Baba Gurditta Ji Nere Duniya De Upper. There's a story behind that. Baba Atalarai, which is their Gurdwar there, O Nire. But there's Baba Anirai, Baba Surjma, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And why didn't the Gurta Gaddi, the Guruship, go uh, to any of these other sons? Why did it? Why? Why has Maharaji chosen to give it to his grandson, and not even his eldest grandson, the youngest grandson? This disturbed them a little bit, and they were wondering what the reasoning behind it was. And she said, "That what am I to do? Is it because Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji doesn't befit? He sits in samadhi." He sits in deep meditative states and he doesn't talk much with the world. He doesn't um, conversate with anybody, doesn't mingle with anybody. Is it because of that? Please, Sachya Bhasha, explain. Marjiyodo Prashada Shakresi. Prashada Shakya got his hands washed and he took a Ramal and he says, Nanaki Ithya. And Nanaki came and he says, Bring. Uh, uh, open your hands and then in her hands Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji gave her a Ramal and then he brought a Sevadar, called a Sevadar to bring something. He whispered to him and then the Sevadar brought a Panj Granthi. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Panj Granthi are Pothiya, like Gurdke Sahib but with particular bodies that are in there. A Panj Granthi Gurdka and that he gave to Mata Nanaki. And then he took out a shastra, a shastra, a particular shastra, a katar, a katar, which is a triangular blade that is used against opponents when they're in approximate range. That was, those three things were given. And he says, Tum fikr kate kar The Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Jinu Gurta Gadi Aap hi hai. And that Ramal bestowed upon him on the day of the Gurta Gadi. The Panj Granthi is for Bebe um, Mata Gujar Kaur, Mata Gujri Ji, right? Uh, the daughter-in-law, it's to be given to her. Because now these years of while Guru, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, every year that goes by, she's going to be doing a Bias too. A Bias means by reciting Bani over and over again. And that's for Mata Gujar Kaur. And the last thing, is for the Bali Purk, the tenth form that will come, and he's going to come in that house. It's going to be Guru Gobind Singh Ji. The Qatar is for him, for three individuals Ramallah for Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, Ramallah, I should say, and then the second being the Panj Granthi Pothi for Be uh, Mata Gujar Kaur, and the last being the Qatar for Guru Gobind Singh Ji. And he says, Tu Fikr Na Kar, Bakale Chalja. Bakale was her PK paint. 
Peke Pend is where the woman grows up and then she goes to her Sore Pend after she gets married. Okay? And the Peke Pend, he doesn't tell her to go back to her house in her Peke Pend. He tells her to go to a Gursik by Merasi. And Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji had prophesied that in the future, Pai Mera said that Maharaj Mirikare Aake Brajo. And Maharaj Ji said that Asi Amange, but Aja Medevich Nehi Amange, meaning that in this bodily form I won't come, but I will come and I will stay for a long period of time. And he was prophesizing that Guru Teg Bhadr Sahib Ji was going to come. And now he had instructed Mata Nanaki to go now to Bukale and await. Well, what would happen is 26 years would go by not an easy amount of time and there's a pora side and you'll find pora side um within all pretty much all of the guru teg father side ji guru cars you'll see their pora sides if it's, you go to valle you go to different places even assam jaake assam is a state um towards the west of india and I should say the east of India. And then what you find is you find Pore Sahib within the Guru Kais. The Pore Sahib, Pore are uh, sub level little areas built where just one person can fit in. And so they can stay isolated and stay in their own meditation. And these Pore Sahib would be built and it would be built and by Mehre De Kare Ek Pore Sahib Banai and there Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji for 26 years would do Tapasya. Now Guru Gobind Singh Ji has written a Bani called Bichitra Natak. In Bichitra Natak he says Taat Maad Mur Alak Arada Bohbid Jog Sadhana Sada. And what that refers to is Taat and Maad. Taat refers to father and Maat refers to mother that in an immense way they practiced abhyas meaning worship of Paramatma for a lot of years 26 years he didn't just acknowledge the father being Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji he also acknowledged Mata Gujar because both his father and his mother would become Shaheed they would become martyrs of the Panth, each in their own time. Mata Gujarkor, you guys probably are already familiar, would be on the top of Thanda Burj. And that night, before the Shote Sahibzade would go and become Shiv, they were done, all night she would do Katha, or give this discourse of telling the Sakhi of Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji, which we were sharing with you today. See how the Sakhi, the story of Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji becomes instrumental of inspiring people that no matter what you face that's coming as an ordeal in front of you in life, you can stay strong and planted in the ideals that God has given you. You don't need to waver. Regardless of how much pressure you see surrounding you, even if it comes to the point that a person has to give their life. Sacrifices come in different forms, right? Sacrifices come ultimately with the body, but sacrifices are made even such as programs like this because you're sacrificing your time for other things to be here right now to learn about the person who gave the ultimate sacrifice to give his head to save another religion. So, now, 26 years have passed. Guru Haraya Sahib Ji has given the Gurtagadi to his son, younger son, Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji. Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji has gone to Delhi. And this is written by Pai Gurdas Singh, who is also a Kavi of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Guru Har Krishna Payoastam Balabira Jin Ponch Daheli Tajo Sarira And he went, Daheli means Delhi. Oh, Delhi de which gay? And what did he do? He gave his life to cure people of a pandemic that was raging at that time. Took all the disease upon himself. But the 
beautiful thing that people would say that look even disease took the life of Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji. No, that was the amount of time that God wanted to play out in that form, in the eighth form. But right before Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji was going to go, all the smallpox that was on his body, it disappeared. And they could see that Paramatma, the Ekkhils, that this was a play of Paramatma, but it was a sacrifice of Paramatma, and he's really above all of diseases and death in this world. Right? So Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji, before he passed, passed that Jyoti Jyot Samai, what he did was he called upon Baba Gurditta Ji. Now, this is not the elder brother of Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji. This Baba Gurditta Ji is from the family of Baba Buddha Ji. I don't know, how many people know of Baba Buddha Ji? Put up your hand. Heard of Baba Buddha Ji? At least? Okay. Baba Buddha Ji is an eminent Gursik from the time of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. He lived all the way up to the time of Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji. And now his family, um, his family's role is being carried on by Baba Gurditta Ji. And what is that family role? That is to anoint the next Guru Sahib. Is to anoint the next Guru Sahib. And everybody knows now Baba Buddha Ji has done, performed these rites. Then this is the next Guru Sahib. If Baba Buddha Ji's family has it, then you would know that that's not Guru Sahib. Okay? Because there were people during that time that were from Guru Sahib's family and they even possessed the uh, odd city Guru Granth Sahib Ji that had been prepared from Guru Arjan Dev Ji. But they had not been anointed, but they were trying to proclaim themselves as the next Guru Sahib. And that we're going to come to. Well, what happened is Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji had called on Baba Gurditta Ji and he called for a Nariyam and Panjapase. This was part of the uh, rites, but there are nothing in the Sikhitam that is empty because either it's symbolic and it has deeper meaning. And what the deeper meaning was, a Nariyam represents a head that I'm giving my head to the next form, okay? And the Panj Pase is Panji Parmesar. Ek Sikh, Doe Saad Sang, Panji Parmesar. Five represents the form of God. So Panj Pase, Ode Uparakhe, and then Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji went like this with his hand. Because at that time he couldn't get up, it was to represent Parikarma. Parikarma, Pradarshan uh, is is an act of sacrificing. Hovari, Jiovari, that meaning that I'm giving my body, I'm giving my mind and everything of mine uh, over to this form that I'm um, going around, walking around. In the same way that we see the sun and when the earth goes around the sun, in the same fashion uh, the Guru Sahib would do to the next form, he would walk around the next form. He would do that, Baba Gurditta Ji now goes because he said that where should I go? Baba Gurditta Ji doesn't know which Guru Sahib it is. He says that Baba Basse Je Gram Bikale Ban Kur Sangat Sakal Samale That go to Bakale and there you will find the next Guru Sahib. But now in Bakale there are 22 people that belong to the Sodi Bats, the family of the Sodis and they're all setting up shop as the next Guru Sahib. Because there is a thing that uh, the human race is very easily corrupted. It's been touched on by many authors over the ages and we've seen it through empires that a person gets a little bit of power, they exploit and they bring down and they love using people. A little bit. A person gets it when somebody gets praised. They feel like they're above the other person without even saying it. So now there's 22 imposters. One of them, which is Tirmal, he has Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And there are not many sroops of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. This is the original one that Guru Arjan Dev Ji and Pai Gurdas Ji ne tiyar kita si. That, that they had prepared. He has it. And there's a story behind that too. He stole it during the fourth war that Guru Argobin Sahib Ji was fighting, in which Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji also fought. And that, that day was when people understood that he is Teg Bahadur. He fights with a Teg and he fights with courageousness. 
Well, during that time, Tir Mal had sided with the opposite side, not Guru Sahib's side, and he took the sroop. And now he's in Bakale telling people, I have the sroop of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, you should matha take to me. 22 imposters. And the one that is to be Guru doesn't care for anybody to come to matha take to him. He doesn't care for any Maya. He doesn't care for any possessions. He wants to stay Gop and he doesn't care for it. But then eventually, with a long story short, Baba Gurditta Ji finds Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And he does the ceremony. He does the ceremony, he anoints him. And Mata Nanaki is happy, she's there. Mata Gujar Kaur, she watches. And then there's some other six Sevadars that are also there. But Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji says to him, that I don't want you to pro proclaim this. I don't want you to tell anybody. So now the, how does Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji become Pargat? How does he become revealed to the world? Well, that would happen through a Gursik named ba ba Baba Makhan Shah. Pai Makhan Shah, who was a rich merchant. And he used to sail his ship to different lands and get merchandise and then bring it back and sell it. He was from a pen called Tande. And Tande Takriban Sare Banjare. Banjare meaning merchants. These are businessmen. And this one businessman had Sharda for the Guruka. And during the time that his ship, while he was transporting uh, um, a merchandise over the seas, what happened is that the ship was going down. And as the ship was going down, it was getting hit by uh, a lot of waves and turbulent water that he had tried many attempts to sail past it, but it wasn't happening. And then he turned to Ardas. Ardas, meaning his supplication, his prayer to Paramatma, and he read a Japji Sahib. Kar chit ekagar jap ko pada, according to our Ithyas. I'll be citing lines from our Ithyas as well, so you know that this has been uh, cited. Because you guys are university students, and sometimes what happens is when people share uh, stories, they don't cite a lot of things. I like citing it, and I'm going to be sharing it with you. So he wanted Japji Sai Pella Padi. And you know, after he did Japji Sai, because they could, you know, we could hear Das Karnia, Tang Trika, yeah, there's a formal or Das and an informal or Das. Informal or Das can be done at any place, anytime. If you're sitting on the bus, you're sitting here, you can recognize all the Guru Sahib's names and you can do our Das. And then there's a formal or Das where you, you should do part and then do name the Guru Sahib's through our, the Ardas that you typically hear at the Guru Kars that you become familiar with when you practice Sikhi. Well, he did this Ardas and he says Sache Pasha. In his Ardas, he said that Sache Pasha, he did um, a promise. He said that Guru Sahib, that whatever uh, rakam that comes out of it, I will give you this much out of it. Now, this isn't as per Sikhi. We don't do Sukhnas. We don't do these promises because that's like, if you don't fulfill my wish, then I don't believe in you. That's what happens if you do a Sukhna. But people still do it and uh, people still believe in this tradition. But uh, by Makkan Shah, who's still growing in Sikhi, he did this and he said this. But this was going to become um, uh, his way of discovering which, the Guru, which Guru Sahib it is. So now what happens is, what he sees, to his astonishment, that the waves have settled, and his ship is stable, and it's now going to its destination. And he knew that at that time, within moments of his ardas completing, the Paramatma ne odi rakhya kitiya, that God has protected him. And then, in his kushi, he now goes looking for the Guru Sahib to bring this money to him, that he had promised him. Well, he goes to Delhi and he finds Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji has left his bodily cloak and the light has now passed on to the ninth form. He's directed to Bukale and there he sees 22 imposters that are sitting there calling themselves Guru and he goes and he says, which one is it? Well, he says, if I please five pass it at each of these individuals, eventually the, the real Guru will tell me that's not how much you promised me. That's what he says in his head. And all of these people, 
They see that he has 500 men with him. He has his wife and his uh, a child with him. That he, he's well off. It, this person's well off. That if I get a powerful individual to follow me, the imposters are thinking that if you get this person to follow you, then what will happen is then automatically, automatically people will turn to you. They're all looking to buy Makkansha as the key in order for them to be separated amongst the other, the others, to know that I am the official ninth guru. Now he's gone to all 22. He's matatek to all of them. He sat and listened to them. But all the man shant ni hoya. Because there is no, um, there isn't that sad tone. Now, a holy muk with the word of creator, with the word of the creator has given bani to us. And they don't possess that bani. They don't have that word of God. And within the word of God, there's peace and poise and there's things just like it settled the waters for by Makkansha while he was on the ship he wasn't getting settled in his mind because his body is almost like his ship now it's unstable and turbulent and he's going through the waters of these 22 imposters but he's not being settled inside he's saying that that my mind just as my ship is now drowning in doubt and where is my true guru? And eventually somebody hinted there is another. He, he was growing hopeless that 22 here aren't the real individuals. He was convinced that they're not the real uh, uh, individuals that befit of uh, being the next guru sahib. Then who is the next one? And then somebody pointed out there is another. They call him Te Tega Tapa. Tapa, anybody who does worship alone. Then he decides on looking for him. At Amrit Vela, in the early mornings, he goes looking for him. And then when he comes and he, he's directed by a child to go to this place where now you can find Gurdwara Baba Bakale, he comes and then they direct him, Mata Nanki leads him to that Pora and he comes and Matha takes. Now, Guru Tegh Bahadur said, even in our Athyas, didn't care for that 500 coins and there's going to be other paramans or examples that i'm going to give that where he just says take it off i don't care for any of it then what happens is when he does put the five passe that he knew that at this time akal wants him now to reveal himself so he said that makancha that you called and you made a promise now people in this world what has happened over time is nobody's, uh, 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 there's a, f a figure of speech saying a man of their word or a person of their word. That you, people say things, they don't do it. That's why we lack power in our words. People will say that I'll do this, but they don't do it. That's a big thing. That's one thing I want you to leave with today and reflecting. Bali par koa sur bir bachan ke bali Guru Maharaj de bachana that those people are powerful individuals they first of all ashiti bachani kar de and when they do they live up to it right if they say they're going to do it they live up to it well Guru Maharaj ji wo pai makhan shah had said that he he would get he was going to get 500 more so Maharaj ji said that you're not living up to your word you said you were going to get 500 and then at that time, he felt this surge of energy come through him. That he felt like just proclaiming it out that Guru. And Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji said that, No, if you do, in the afterlife, I don't want that. But now this is a hurdle. A hurdle is that yes, you can. But je mu ki kala kitta jauga. Mu kala kitta jauga is pav that uh, that you're willing to go through this, n risk your own reputation by making your face black, but getting the news up. And he was willing to do it. Sometimes the tests 
are set by Guru Sahib, but he was willing to accept He said, Prilok de vich kyo? Maharaj, I'm going to do my own face. I'm going to do it. He made his face black and he went on the rooftop and he said, Sacha Guru La Do Re, Sacha Guru La Do Re. That the, the true Guru is found. And right next to that spot of Pura Sahib is called Gurdwara Thada Sahib. Gurdwara Thada Sahib is where Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji sat and all the six Sangatam that knew that these 22 weren't real, that had sugata, had presents and so forth, all with them. And they were waiting for Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib, you're the ninth Guru, to reveal himself, now felt santosht. They felt content. They all came and they matha take to Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And as they came, Tirma sends his man, Shia Masand, to come and kill Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. Jithe Guru Maharaj Ji's Shidi Paniya attempt for his life starts on the first day of the Gurta Gaddi. Of the day that Guru Maharaj Ji received Guruship, Shia Masand sits on the top of uh, a kota or you can see uh, on the second floor of a house and he takes a rifle and he, he aims at Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji and a shot goes and as the shot is fired the, the shot twists as it comes to Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji and it goes by the side of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji's head it pierces a little bit and some blood comes down the face of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji and Maharaj said that I'm going to have to give my head. There's going to be attempts on my head right from the very beginning. And Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, where all of those individuals eventually would come and ransack that place of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, take all those things that people gave and they took it away and took it to the Dera of Tirma. And now there's nothing left there. All the Basit and Makkan Shah had gone back to his own place of residence but then when he found out that people have looted Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji he went to Tirmal's place went with all of his men they were Tirmal's men were so afraid they didn't do anything and he got everything back including the Sroop of Guru Granth Sahib Ji Guru Granth Sahib Ji's Sroop was brought back and when it was brought back to Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji said that no take it all back Makkar Shah says, what? Why should I take it back? He says, I don't need it. Mata Nanaki says, Putta, that listen to me, son. If there are hakka, this is your right. You're the Guru Sahib. And they, people have given this to the Guru Sahib. And then Guru Maharaj recited a Shabd that comes in Raag Basant. And he says, Mai, main tan payo har naam. He says, Mai. My Miri Mata Ji, that I have now received, I've received God's name. Are you saying to me, that's not tan? That is a wealth. That wealth is above any of these worldly work possessions. Man mero taavan te chutkyo kar baitho bisram. And he says that if you follow this too, tera man, your mind, will not waver. It will not waver and it will sit. Just like you sit now, sometimes our mind doesn't sit. People will go to the Guru Ka and they will sit, but their mind doesn't sit. But their mind can sit if it brings the Word of God inside of them and brings the glorious form of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji inside of them. Well, at that time, Marji would leave. Now he would move with Pai Makkancha. They, Pai Makkancha would return all the possessions but he would keep the sroop of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. That sroop in the Byasa Nadi, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji found out that Pai Makkhan Shah still has it and now Maharaj Ji started his travels. And where is he headed? Towards Amritsar. And that sroop, he says, no, it's not time for this sroop yet. Byasa the witch, they covered it up and they placed it into the Byasa, into the waters. And now you might say that, well, isn't this disrespect? We'll watch what happens. The person who comes looking for it, Tirma, is now sending Marajivade, what was the name or a coin term for divers, divers to find that sroop of Guru Granth Sahib Ji in the waters of the Byasa. They couldn't find it. And then there was a sadhu that said that you have to do a das 
if you want Guru Sahib to become Pargat, meaning Guru Granth Sahib Ji to become Pargat, and that Ardas has to include Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji. He would do Ardas, Tirmal does Ardas up to Guru Har Krishan Sahib Ji's name. And now, this is to tell you about the importance that now Tirmal is, has to accept Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji as the Guru Sahib. And when he does Ardas, Guess what comes to the top of the waters, just like Bhagat Kabir Ji did on a Mrikshala when they threw him into the waters. It was Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Guru Granth Sahib Ji came to the top of the waters and then those individuals reclaimed it and found no water had soaked through any of the angs of Tansiri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And the family of Tirma still has that through today. Okay? And so. What happened is he had to acknowledge Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji to Ardas. And that's why Ardas has to acknowledge each of the Guru Sahib's names. So now Guru Maharaj Ji goes to Amritsar. Amritsar he arrives and what do the Masands do there? Masands are the caretakers or the people that take in the money and uh, uh, take care of the money that comes into the Guru Kar. The Masands shut the doors of Darshani Devi. This is the um, the hometown of Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji. Ten minutes away is the Avtaristan of Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib. They've shut the doors. They won't let Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib in. And then Maharaj said, Ne Masand, E Masand, these aren't Masands, E Amrit Sariyani. These aren't people that you should say belong to the city of Amritsar. E agan e antar sariye. These people are burning inside of greed and Trishna. These aren't people that are befit of being called Masans. So instead of go, go, being able to go into her mandir side, he wasn't able to go to Mathatek. And Marji sat with right next to Akal Tak side, there's a Gurdwara. Gurdwara Thada side is the place of Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib, where he sat when they didn't let him in. But then people didn't stand up and say this is wrong. But next door to, or I should say, next very close to Amritsar is a pen called Valle. The Bibiya, all the Maya, all the women stood up and they said that this is wrong. Then why aren't they allowing Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji to have Darshan at Sri Armandir Sahib? Well, if they won't let him, we're bringing him to our pen. If nobody stands up at Amritsar, then we're taking Guru Maharaj And then they would take Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji to a pen called Valle. And the women there still to this day organize a program on the day that Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji reached that place. And Maharaj Ji said, Maya Rabba Rajaya. These are the words of Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji. That means these mothers are go according to Akal Purk's Raza. Raza means hukum, means order. So, I don't want to go too far on the journeys, but I will say that then eventually Guru uh, Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji would come to uh, Kirtpur Sahib. And Kirtpur Sahib, a lot of the family of Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji is there, like from Guru Hargobin Sahib Ji, the ancestors are all situated there. Um, when Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji would also meet with Mata Krishan Kaur, her child, Sahib Zada, is Guru Har Krishan Sahib Ji. And then they talked about Guru Teg, Guru Har Krishna Sahib Ji's sacrifice. They talked amongst each other and Maharaj Ji Onuvi Honsla Ditta. He consoled her as well. And then they said to, then uh, one Raja that had been freed during the time of Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji, out of Gwalior de Kila, his name is Tara Chan. His son, Dalip Chan, meets Maharaj Ji, Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji in Kirtpur Sahib. And he says to him, the Sache Pasha, Ithib Raju, I'll give you a place. I'll give you land. Maharaji says, if you're going to give me land, don't give me any land here in Kirtpur Sahib. Everybody has their places. Give me something north of it. And if you give it to me, I'm going to still pay you. I don't want anything free. Then Maharaji gave 157,000 rupees to purchase a land which was part of Bilaspur and it was called Makhoa. Makhoa. That place, Maharaj would go there. It's another Pursar that you guys are familiar with. 
it would be purchased by Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji and that place he would first name Chak Nanaki that was the name it would be renamed Anandpur Sahib when Guru Maharaj would be reunited with Guru Gobind Singh Ji one time he was reunited at Patana Sahib and Guru Ka Bagh, and the second time was here at Anandpur Sahib and when Guru Gobind Singh Ji came and he embraced Guru Gobind Singh Ji at a young age of seven years of age he said Anand Pya Meri Mai Sat Guru Me Paya he said that uh, Anand Pya Meri Mai that I'm in bliss that my mother that I have received the next Guru Sahib in embrace and he would say this and they would name that place Anandpur Sahib that's how the name of Anandpur Sahib came into being now Maharaj would go to Tirbeni um, and Jabhi Jat Tirbeni Pe Pun Daan Din Karat Bate Tehi Prakas Hamara Peo Patana Sahar Bikhe Pavaleo that Guru Gobind Singh Ji writes when he came into Tirbeni at Tirbeni Maharaj was doing Daan donations to so many individuals in Naam Daan by giving people Naam the word of Y group and possessions for the Garib and then Mata Nanaki said that look look at your age now and look at Mata Gujarkar's age still I was told by your father that the tenth form will come in this house and I Buddhi hogi on it that I become old and Hajitak Miri Akka haven't been able to see the blessed sight of my grandson when will he come into this world? Itta Nitrika si that bring the next child into this world. And Mata Gujarkor, who not once opened her mouth before Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji in a, such a request. She stayed devoted by the side, doing her own abhyas, because her Sikhi Avasta, we all know in the Panth, that it was very high, and we can safely say it was Brahm Gyan Avasta, meaning that she was fully achieved and accomplished being in, on this earth. And then Marji said, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji said that, Pai Banu Ali Veer Hagiya Os Vakat, and I don't want to go into too much explanation. If somebody is interested, I can explain what Pai Banu Ali Veer is. They did a khand part from Pai Banu Ali Veer. They still have all the names of the people that did part that day. And then what happened is, uh, Mata Nanki did her das. And she says, This is a tricky das. The 11th Guru Sahib is Guru Granth Sahib. Yeah, I'm doing an ardas for the 10th Guru Sahib to come from the 11th Guru Sahib. And how do you do that kind of ardas? She did in a such a tongue, Trika, that such a pasha, of the jire dasme jama, that the 10th bodily form that you're going to grace, please send him to this world. Right? And then that's what Maharaj said that the body started forming in the womb of Guru Mata Gujarkor at Tribeni and by the time that Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji left that family at Patana Sahib which was the house of Paisala Sahib who was a Sikh of Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj's Prakash happened and when Maharaj was in a place called Tubri in Assam and Maharaj Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji when he heard when he, he felt that Guru Gobind Singh Ji has come, he closed his eyes and sat down and Japji Sahib the part Padayasi. And everybody said that, what, why Maharaj why did you just sit down? He said that the tenth form has come, my child has come, my Sahib Zada has come. And the Raja there um, took cannons, guns, and they all started firing it in celebration, celebrate, celebratory fires into the sky. Kushi Manonle, that Guru Gobind Singh Ji has come. And Maharaj would send Hukam Name, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib, that we still have, have. He said that in the Hukam Name, he said that if individuals, Alkar of the government, come, that Onanu Pabandi Deni Sarandini. And what does that mean? Pabandi Sarandi. Pabandi mean, meaning that they'll let them come to the feet and sit at the feet of Guru Gobind Singh Ji mean they follow what Maharaj Ji says, what the 10th Guru says, not get them to sit at the Sarana of Guru, Teg, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, meaning that Guru Gobind Singh Ji go according to them. 
make sure they follow Guru Gobind Singh Ji. How do you do that? Well, Mata Gujar Kaur, Mama Kirpal Chand, we're told that you don't say anything to Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Whatever he does, just follow what he does. And they followed through, even at a young age, even things that they didn't understand. But that's a story for another time. Now I'm going to forward to the Shi Deeper Sang. And this is a quote by Kushal Khan Kautik. The Kitab de Vichalikasi. The Aurangzeb, who was on the Takht in Delhi, he says, This is his sense of justice. I know it very well. A Muslim who always follows the commandments, yet he's imprisoned his own father, Shah Jahan, for many a year and shed his own brother's blood mercilessly. And this was the other person on the opposite end, on the side of what we can say tyranny, on the side of what's evil, on the side that's going to be causing oppression. Well, what happened is this person, Aurangzeb, he wasn't dim-witted. He was very intelligent. And what he did is he gathered 1,400 vidwans of Muslim scholarship and he collected him and he made this grant. You can go on to Google and on Wikipedia and see this grant. It's, I forgot its name, but it's a grant of Sharia. Sharia is a law of Islam derived from the Quran and the Hadith. And this law is what he was going to push on all the inhabitants and residents of India. And this doesn't allow you to practice your tar. There is this not inclusive, it's exclusive. So what happens is while he was learning about other people's religions, he would have a pundit that would come in and recite passages of the Gita and translate it. He wanted to know what was in the Gita. And then he was looking for something that could be twisted around. But luckily the pundit, he was understanding and he made sure there was nothing that Aurangzeb could use against his own tar. Well, one day what happened is he fell sick. The pundit became sick that day and his son, he sent his son in to do the translation. And when his son went in, he wasn't as smart. And what he did was, there was a line and this is the line translated. He says, even if your tarm is without any virtue, still it's liberating and worthwhile to die within your own tarm. And he, and right then, those Vedavans of Muslim time, they started twisting it to Aurangzeb. He said that even in the Gita it says to stay in your own dharma. And our dharma says to bring other people under the deen of Hazrat Muhammad Sahib. So they're telling us to stay under our dharma, then our dharma says to bring them under our fold. And Aurangzeb agreed and that's when it started. So, Sheed Bhai Mani Singh writes this. He says, Aurangzeb thought that the Kashmiri Pandits were the most educated Hindus and were also teaching the Hindu texts to all other Hindus. Meaning that the central scholarship for the Hindu Dharma was coming from Kashmir. And once they get converted, if you convert them to Islam, it will be easy to convert the remaining Hindus. So he decided uh, to bring Kashmir under the fold of Islam. To this day, people in India do these exhibitions of Aurangzeb and they go around different parts of India. And those people that attend these exhibitions, they have all these edicts or hukums, hukumname that Aurangzeb had issued on tearing down different sacred mandars that are part of the Aksar Tirth pilgrimage spots sacred to their dharm, that tearing it down and replacing it with masjids. And these masjids would then become uh, central kinders or central centers for people to bring other people down into the Islamic dharm. If you didn't convert, you died. That was the condition. So people out of fear were brought into the Muslim term. And a condition of the Islam term is that if you leave the Islamic term, apostasy, what is apostasy? The penalty of apostasy is death as well too. 
So this was the structure created. You come into Islam, you cannot leave Islam because both ways it's death. And those that don't want to die, they come into the fold of Islam. So what they what happened in Kashmir? Now these Hindus pundits they wear a janiyu. A janiyu is a cotton thread. How much can a cotton thread uh, uh, weigh? Just now, when gatra paena, they wear a cotton thread around them, which is sacred to them. Now, how much would a cotton thread such as that weigh? Probably not much. By the mass killing that happened in Kashmir of the Hindus and them collecting those threads, compiled the thread, somebody measured it and it was 110 pounds. 110 pounds of cotton threads. That's how much killing happened in Kashmir. And the Mukhi Pandits, they went to the person who was the general there, Sher Afghan Khan, who's working under Aurangzeb to implement his rules of killing them, they pleaded to him. They said that, give us some time. Let us pray to our deities and call for their assistance. He laughed and he said that, there is no big one bigger than Allah. You guys can do whatever you want. They went to this one cave, it's a mandir, the cave, it's called Amarnath Puri. In Amarnath Puri, in the cave, they sat for a long period of time. And they worshipped, they called out, they stayed hungry for a long period of time. And then finally, something happened. What was it? They were sitting in a circle and in the midst of the circle, one piece of paper. And that paper, had a font written in an ancient script called Amravati. In that paper, this is what's quoted. Sirina nek jag guru bisala, apar me samrat kalakala. On the paper it was written. They believed that it was sent down by Shivji. And it was written that Guru Nanak Dev Ji is the guru of this whole world. And apar me immeasurable samrat. His immeasurable capabilities he possesses and powers he possesses. That whoever is now in his seat and has received the Gurta Gaddi, Kaj Tumare Sare Soi, is that person is the person who will complete your task of what you want done. And ehi patrka le tom javo. Take this patrka and take it with you to him. Brithi apni sakalu sanavo and plead, plead to him, cry to him, and let him know your condition. So rakhe ge tarm tohara and oho to da tarm rakhuga. He will be your tarm rashik, meaning the person who's going to keep your tarm. Then bin te ha. No, Ubara. Aside from him, there's nobody else that will be able to avail you, who will be able to save you. So now, at another person, where Gurdwara Keskar Sahib is over here, if you walk down through the bazaar, 10 minute walk, maybe 15, probably less than that, is walking distance, you come to the home of Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji. And there, there is also a, a Gurdwara Astan there. And there the Kashmiri Pandits arrived. What condition did they arrive? Evi Sornwala. Watch how they come. Long straws of grass. And then their clothes are tattered. And then tears are dropping down their eyes. They're carrying a white flag. Do you, some of you guys know why people put up white flags? I don't know if you've seen war scenes when somebody will put up a white flag. What does that mean? They surrender, right? Meaning that they're defeated. And when we say balhar, we say that Sache Pasha, balhari. Balhar means apna bal har ke jana paramatma de If you call out to God and you say that I have strength, I can do stuff. That's not really surrendering to Paramatma, are you? You're 
Your ego is saying to you, you can carry out the task, but yet you're calling out to Paramatma. That's not how an Ardas works. In this Balhar means that they've Harge, they're defeated, their energy has been defeated. And they're standing on one leg. They, they came and stood on one leg. And when they came, they let, laid out their condition before Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And these are the words that are from our Tarm, Atarmat Pustaka. Hamaro bal ab reheo nakai. We have no strength left now. He Guru Tegh Bahadur Rai, O King, Holy King Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. We have no strength with us. Gaj ke bandhan kaatin haare. Tum Guru Nanak hai avtare. And this I have to tell you. They said that just like you cut the entanglements of the elephant. And this comes later on in the slok of Guru Teg Bhadra Sahib Ji. Gaj. Gaj means hati. And what story are they talking about? There's a place where the Ganga opens into the river. It's called Hari Har Shetar. That place, one time an elephant uh, the, the, the king amongst his pack went first into the waters. Now this elephant, the other elephants weren't pleased with this one elephant. It's an ancient story from the land of India. This elephant went into the waters to bathe. As you typically know, elephants go in, they clean themselves and then they come out and then they throw dirt on top of their bodies. And this is referred to in Guru Granth Sahib Ji as well too. But anyways, this Gajindan, the other Pak was not happy with him, but he was very powerful in strength. So, eh Baldinal, he became the king amongst his pack. And so when he went into the waters at Harishetan, because that's where the river meets with the ocean, out of the ocean, uh, there was sitting there an enormous octopus. And that octopus, what it did was, as the elephant had gone deep into the water, it took out all of its tentacles and wrapped it around the elephant. The elephant couldn't find proper footing, so it kept slipping over and over again. As it slipped, it was becoming more and more submerged in the waters. Eventually, the elephant, when it would lose its strength, it would get pulled in deeper by the octopus. And it looked, he watched his whole pack standing there and nobody came out to offer him a snout so he could wrap his snout out around it and be pulled out what did the pack do they all turned around and turned away matlab the meaning of this is sahara koi nahi reha sanghi sathi bhi nahi koi reha and it was him alone who does he have to call to while he was getting submerged he has his snout out of the water and he's beneath the water his head is beneath he's breathing through the snout and then on the top of the waters from what he sees is a lotus flower and you guys know that on top of the water lotus flower sits so what does he do something awoke something evoked him to grab hold of that lotus flower and when his snout went and held on to that lotus flower we call Chit Charan Naam, Chit Charan Kamal Prabh Jodi hai. The matal of that, that we call the uh, God's feet as the lotus. We use the lotus as symbolic of being God's feet. And something evoked from his past life, that when he touched the lotus, he remembered Pramatma. Something from his June or his life as an animal went above the human, above the animal life and his spirit awoke inside of him and called to Paramatma and he cried and pukarai and at that time God heard his cry and even in uh, Chaupe Sahib and Bachitra Natak Guru Gobind Singh Ji says God hears the cries of even from an ant to an elephant he knows about all the cries of all beings on this planet earth and when what happened is when that elephant cried God came and what form did he come he sent a, a ring of fire Sudarshan Chakra the Sudarshan Chakra came and came and cut off all the tentacles of the octopus and then 
the elephant was able to come out of the waters. And then the elephant was saved from this predicament. And that's the story Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji will refer to in Sloka Mahalla Nava. And this is the plight that the Kashmiri Pandits are referring to for themselves. They say that Asi Gajja Apa Hathiyam and that Hathi is being caught by the tentacles of what? Sharia law. Islamic law is taking us down and we're dying. Look at what a beautiful example they're using from an ancient story they're referring to themselves as the egotistical elephant that our pride has blinded us from coming to you. But now that we have nobody else to save us, we are going down, we're drowning, and we call to you to save us from the Islamic Sharia law that Aurangzeb is putting upon us and killing our fellow beings. And that's what he says, Gajke bandhan kaatan hare. We believe you are the one that comes and cuts those tentacles off. Firat firat prab aay thare. That we've gone to different places. Nobody has come to our help. We've come to you, Guru Teg Bhadra Sahib Ji. Thak pare hon to darbare. Thakke aaya. That we've come to your darbar. Seva Hari is arz guzari. Hey, Hari Pramatma Guru Teg Bhadra Sahib Ji. Listen to our das. Tumit kal jog ke krishn marari. You are the Lord in kal jog. We believe you to be Pagwan in kal jog. And then... At that time, when they had explained their situation from a distance, watching was a nine-year-old Guru Gobind Singh Ji. He came in to the Darbar and he says, Pita Ji, why is everybody so serious? Why is I Gambir Kyon? He says, why are they so uh, Gambir? And Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji explained that Putra Aurangzeb is destroying their religion. And they've come here after losing so many of their people and they've come for help. And he says, Then Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji, uh, he asks Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, then what can be, be done? He says, A person who has never sinned in their life, a holy being and a true righteous person will have to give their life in order to save their time. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji then cited a line from Guru Granth Sahib Ji. He says, Gyan tyan kich karm na jana Saar na jana teri Sab te vata sat gur nanak Jin kal rakhi meri He says that all I know is the greatest of the greatest is Guru Nanak Dev Ji. And I believe you're the ninth form of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Only you can give your life to save their religion. Guru Gobind Singh Ji says at ninth age. Age nine, when Guru Nanak Dev Ji, the first Guru, was being, uh, well, the Pandit was putting a Janu on him at a, at a Hindu rite uh, passage, you can say um, rite of passage. They were putting a Janu on Guru Nanak Dev Ji. Maharaj stopped him and he said, I don't want the Janu. And he saw, said, a pavitra shab that comes in Asa Divar. And he cited that shab. And at that age, he was nine years of age. And he says, I do not want the Janu on my body. And age nine, Guru Gobind Singh Ji tells Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji that if they want a Janu, then they should have the Janu. Where we will never wear the Janu, but it's their time and they want to practice it then who is it? Nobody should rip it off them. That's their right. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji says this, and when the ninth Guru who tests Guru Gobind Singh Ji in front of everybody to see what he would say, he says that, are you willing to lose your father? And Guru Gobind Singh Ji says that my one honorable father that I am forever a sacrifice for, if will save millions, millions of other children from losing their fathers. My one father will. 
and that's Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Age nine, he would send Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji to give, give his life to save another religion. He would give his mother, he would give us the Char Sahib Zade. His whole blood lineage is gone. But his Nadi Putta, the one that he said are my children, the Khalsa Panth, still exists today. And then, when he, Maharaj was pleased with these words, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji took him against his chest, embraced him, and he said that, I expected no less from you. And he said that, Jo Sarna Ave, whoever comes to our sanctuary, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji says, Jo Sarna Ave, this Kant Lave, the Guru Maharaj Ji, the Maryada, that whoever comes to our darbar, that you're supposed to embrace them, not push them away. You embrace them. E bird. Bird means this is the nature. E bird swami. This is the nature of our master. Of Akalpurk. Samda means of. This is the nature of Akalpurk. And now, he gave this assurance to the Kashmiri Pandit that to see Jake Subedar. Nu kadeo, Jekar Apa Sikhane Sikhane Guru nu Musulman Banalavonge, Tay Hindu Sare Api Musulman Banja Javange. That if you can convert Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, then all of these Hindus will automatically convert to Islam. And you won't have to go around killing anybody. This is a written document of proof that the head of those pundits, Kirpa Ram Keen, it's a written document that exists today. And this is what it is. I'm just going to quote this. If it's a little hard to understand, you can ignore it. But I wanted you to know that these things exist. This is what Pandit Kirpa Ram wrote about him coming that day. He says, Pandit Kirpa Ram, he writes his name. Beta Aduram ka, the son of Aduram. Pota Narayan Das ka, the grandson of Narayan Das. Par Pota Brahmadasa, the great grandson of Brahmadas, Bans Thakur Daska, our last name is Thakur Das, and Pardwaj Goth, meaning the I should say the clan of Thakur Das, and Pardwaj. Pardwaj is their goat, their last name. Sar Sut Dat Brahman. They recognize them as the caste of Brahmins. Right? Khodas Mukhi Brahmana Kesa. They came with a lot of Brahmins. But 17 of them, the Mafkarna Khordas means 16. 16 of them were Mukhi Pandits, the head of all, all, all of their groups. So there are 16 Mukhi, Jade Vadi Nomi, within the month of Jade, on the Vadi, the waxing moon, the ninth uh, the date, and the ninth date of the waxing moon, Summit 1732, the year of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji's Shidi. Isvi Bikr, no, Bikrmi Sammatevich, Makhoal Ne Prabhat Hua. That land that they recognize as Makhoal, which Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji would eventually name Anandpur Sahib. They came, they came and they found Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, Sikha Ke Nove Guru. They came and found the ninth Guru, Tan Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji. That Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji is named Ne Tiraj Diya. He gave us relief. We breathe, we breathe a breath of relief that somebody's gonna save us. And that's what he wrote. And that exists to this day from that time. So, anyways, moving forward, now we give assurance pundits were when and told Sher Afghan Khan. Sher Afghan Khan laughed that you guys will all convert, they assured him we'll all convert to Islam. He goes and tells Aurangzeb, Aurangzeb is familiar with Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And when Pandit, uh, sorry, Sher Afghan Khan says, Ek Hindu de Agu de Musulman banan na sari Kashmiri Islam nu kabool karayange. Aurangzeb says, then go to where he lives and tell him the emperor, emperor has summoned you. So he sends messengers and Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji would respond, Changa to si chalo, asi aap aajamange. And Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji would come himself, but 
Maharaji would visit Gorsiks because he had promised a lot of Gorsiks that he would come to their home. And so he was going to different ways and that map is still marked up of all the directions that Guru Maharaji went and he was accompanied by these Gorsiks. One is Pai Gurditta, the one that took the Nari of Panjipasa to Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji from the family of Baba Buddha Ji. Pai Uda, Pai Matidas. Matidas and Satidas are brothers. Okay? Their, their family has been in Sikhi since Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji. Pai Piragga used to fight in the wars. They're from that family. Pai Matidas and Pai Satidas and Pai Dayaldas. Pai Dayaldas Pai Makida Santanu. Pai Dayaldas, his name is still written in Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji's own writing in Hukam Name. He wrote in Hukam Name, Pai Dayaldas Mera Sarupa. That whenever you need to get anything done, you can go to Pai Dayaldas too. And not Pyakar Desi Pai Dayaldas Nu. And Pai Satidas was the one that would take Marji's Bani and put in Farsi Lippi. Right? And uh, uh, Pai Mani Singh would put in Gurmukhi Lippi and Pai uh, Satidas would, would put in Farsi Lippi. Just to give you a little bit of introduction of these great souls that are also going to give Shihidi. Marji would be traveling. He would come to this one location. It's called Safabad. It's named after Saf Ali Khan. He's the Saka Masarji of Aurangzeb. And he became a murid, a follower of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And while Maharaj would stay for four months. Now when Aurangzeb had summoned him, he didn't know that it was going to take that long. But for four months, he's staying with him because he doesn't want Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji to go. Meanwhile, now a warrant has been issued that you have to arrest Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And they're looking all through Punjab. And they even came to the doorsteps of this individual who's a master ji of Aurangzeb. And you know what he does? This is not to call all Muslims bad. He was a Muslim as well too. He believed in Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And he turned back the soldiers. He says, Khabardar, you cannot come into my home to even arrest Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. Turn him back. And they wouldn't say anything. They don't know. There's, there's family relation between the person who's sending them and they're not going to do anything. So he turned him back. By then, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji would now go further on his journey. And I'm going to make this a little bit shorter now. That Maharaj would arrive in Agra. The place where Taj Mahal exists. Right? That's Aurangzeb's father <coughs> is the one who built Taj Mahal. And that place around that area is Guru Katal. Guru Katal is where Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji came and he knew that now koi Vyantata Banoni Peniya to get arrested. So what he does is he takes um, a shop. Now you might say why did Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji wear a shop? That shop, shop means a something that you press down, a stamp. Shop, that's a more shop. What they would do is that when they write Hukam Name, they would take some wax and the shop used to be the seal that you know it's Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji's. So that shop he took off and he took a dushal or you can say a shawl and he gave it to this poor uh, shepherd and he says go with this and go bring some mathiyaya for these gursiks that are with me and he went and the ajali or the shepherd goes and when he goes to the sweet shop he said that you don't that's not yours who did you get that from and when he found out that this is actually uh, somebody else's and he explained that he's sitting on the outskirts of this town they go and they see it's Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji they tell uh, the, the police chief there the police chief comes they arrest Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji and the five Gursikhs they are taken to the jail the Gurdwara now the jail is still there I visited myself, I've actually gone into the jail and Guru Maharaj Yudhi Prakash the Gurdwara is actually built above the jail and you can go inside and sit at the place where Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji was held captive. And that spot, then they would tell Aurangzeb we found Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. Then they would send a huge army to come to Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. Now, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji would be now taken to Delhi. Before they come into the, the center of Delhi, they come to a place 
what was famously known as Put di Haveli. There's a bridge now, now you can't find this spot, but it's near a bridge where Gurdwara and Nanak Piao is. That place is the original spot they brought Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. They, some of them were drunk, the soldiers. They said, Dekh, Dekh, Padani, Kinna Bahadur ho ga hai. Because it says Bahadur in his name, that he's courageous. Their attempts were to frighten him. They wanted him to become uh, a Muslim on, along the way. But they didn't know about Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. They brought him to a pool, to the Haveli. They all knew it was haunted. They knew that Jiri Jeev Andra Jandaya, either they come running out, Ja, we find their lash inside of that home. People didn't make homes near it. They were, they were so afraid of this place. They would take Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji in there. And during midnight, the Gaur Sikhs were sitting outside of the Haveli. Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji was told to sit inside. Maharaj is sitting in deep meditation. And by midnight, this one Ru, this one being, a spirit came. And he came in and sees Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. What does it do? Just tarah appa dunia de vich kar deya. Even the unditti dunia, the invisible world that we do not see around us, those beings also matha take to Guru Maharaj Ji. In matha take to Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And wanted to do seva. It had a grotesque form because that was the being, that put had been cursing that home. Why? Because he had killed his brother to obtain the house. And Guru Gurbani Devich Likya, those people that die thinking about their house, and they cursed that same house for a long period of time. And that's what he was doing at that time. And then what did he do? He wanted to do seva for Guru Maharaj. Yeah, Preet John went, went and found um, uh, a near, a near place where there was fruit. He brought some kele for Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji to do seva. Because he knew that whatever he touched, he defiles. So he chose a fruit that the peeling can be thrown away, but the fruit inside isn't defiled. So Maharaj Ji took that fruit ate the kela threw out the shelka, the peeling outside of the window. I'm mentioning this because it fell right in front of Pai Mati Das. Now, one Marji ate the kela, the uh, June or that evil spirit now became radiant and resplendent. And that being now disappeared into the heavenly realms and was freed from that life. And that is a life as well too, a prayatyon, even in the Churasi Lak. So now what happened is the peeling would be thrown out and the peeling by Mati Das took it as prashad. That it's been touched by Guru Tegh Bhadra Sahib, he took it as prashad. But now what does he notice? He eats it and all of a sudden his body is surging with power. A power that tells him that he can kill all of these individuals with a snap of his finger. And by Mati Das, then when Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji comes out, which is uh, uh, to the disbelief of the soldiers, that he came out perfectly fine, he didn't run out in the night, nothing happened to him. And that's the first. Pai Mati Das comes to Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji and he says to him that, Maharaj Ji, Minu Hukum Deo. That tell me, I'll kill all these beings and I have that power inside of me. Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, the Narm, Avaj de vich kya in both mitti avaj de vich bol de si Guru Maharaj ji he says Pai Mati Das so where did you get this power? all of a sudden you have this power? why didn't you mention it before? and then he that the ego went down a little bit and he said that's a chipasha oh, oh uh, man, I ate the peeling that was thrown out by you last night and he says that then do you think maybe the power where it came from he doesn't have the power to do all what you're proclaiming? That what you're saying that you can do, don't you think the person that you got this power from also has that capacity? And he says, Sachay Pasha, forgive me. Now that ego totally diminished. And Maharaji showed him too, where he took his finger and pulled it. Sari Shakti Ayan Jime, like somebody pulling a battery out of a per battery out of some uh, uh, a toy. And then he placed it back into him. He says, I want you to possess this power. That's why I threw it out to you 
Now I want you to do something and I want Guru Six to know too that through your life spiritual uh, um, awakening will happen. Power will come inside of you. But that power will needs to be tolerated. Don't curse anybody. Don't wield this power in an unfitting manner that is not approved by Sikhi. Tolerate it. It's God's power. And that power shouldn't be misused. It shouldn't be mistakenly used. Uh, used. So then what happened is that by Matidas, understood this and the soldiers overheard, overheard that by Matidas the soldiers overheard that by Matidas said that he could take down Aurangzeb when they brought him to the Kachari the Gursikh and oh, Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji they, they, they said that hey, can they see that they can take you down Aurangzeb Aurangzeb rov de vichaya and he starts proclaiming and presenting three options and he talked to Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji directly and he said that convert to Islam that is the way you will gain all the benefits of this world all of the year six I'll marry him to the most beautiful women and you will be given high status and property in, in this area you will, I will make you my peer Aurangzeb assured him that you will be known as my peer. That's a Muslim word for saying Guru. Except Islam though. Marji said that my term is my piyara to me. I will not give up my term. Then he says that show me miracles. I want to see powers of holy men. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji would say Natak chetak kiye kukaja prab logan ke avat laja. This is not a cheap magic show. If God gives you powers, it's not for you to, um, to display it, to gain notoriety, to become famous. It's not for that purpose. Then he said it would be death. And he says, that is why I have come. That is why I have come, to give my head, to save the other religion. Aurangzeb saw that there was no fear. Guru Tegh Mahadir Sahib Ji lived by a tenant. I don't give fear to anybody and and I don't I'm not afraid of anybody either right when you worship the Lord all fear subsides in this world he says karamat nidukona and musulmani banna feta maltiya and Guru Maharaj says I will show you one thing bring uh, bring uh, Panjman Mircha. Mircha. So they brought uh, one man is about 37 kilograms. When they brought all these Mircha, and he says, burn them now. As they were burning the Mircha, after 24 hours, he says, check, are they all burnt? Right? And they looked in the Mircha, and three were not burnt. Three of them were not touched unscathed they they were not touched by the fire or the heat and he said that you want to make the islamic term and the hindu term into one islam but what you what's gonna happen is that islam hinduism what's gonna come now about is a new term instead of going two to one it's going to become from two there's going to be a third term and that's the Khalsa term that will be able to tolerate all your heat and not change form and be burnt by what you do so then what happened is they imprisoned Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji no water to any of the uh, 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 people that were imprisoned and they would even pour hot reta on Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji during the days that would go by. In these days, there was a Gursik that was sent from Guru Gobind Singh Ji to go and see what is happening with Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji because all the Sangat is Bebel, meaning that they're restless. They want to know about Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji. And the Sikh came. And the droga or the guard has sharda towards Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji. Though he had to do his duty, 
He still had Sharda, uh, the person, the night guard did at night. That, his name was Abdullah Droga. And Abdullah Droga saw that the other guards are sleeping, so he would take in the sick that came from Anand Parasar to go and meet Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. He would go and meet with Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, and then he would, marry, he would start crying the sick. And he says, Kyo sikha? Kaate ronna? Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji would say. He would say, the sick said that, Maharaj, I'm going to kill you. Sir, Anand Parasar Sahib, Sir, Punjab is crying. Everybody's crying. We're all crying. You never prepared us for this. We don't know what's coming. But what's coming is what we saw with Guru Arjan Dev Ji. We fear for that. And you never gave us the honsa. You never consoled us before you left. And Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji would go to the Droga. And he would say that, bring me a kalam and bring me some kagad. And then Guru, Govind, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji would recite Salok Mahala Nava Ikku Ankar Satgur Prasad Gun Govind Gavo Nahi Gayo Nahi Janma Akar Atkeen There the first slok comes The first slok of 57 sloks that come First what Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji wrote was 49 sloks addressed to the Gursikhs Two sloks One uh, one of which is Chinta ta ki kijiye jo anhoni hoi E marik sansar ko nanik thir nahi koi That salok which is the 51st which was addressed to Mata Nanaki So the 50th and the 51st addressed to Mata Nanaki The one salok for Mata Gujar ko And then one salok for Guru Gobind Singh Ji and that's the one that a lot of you might be familiar with. Dora. Bala shutakyo bandhan pare kachu na ho te upai Kohonanik ab ota hare gaj jiyo ho ho sai Here gaj is mentioned again. Why is it mentioned? Well, you have to hear the translation. Bala shutakyo. That my strength has left me. Bandhan pare. I am entangled in problems. I see no avail, no method of this being myself being saved from this situation. Kohonanik, that now the ninth form of Guru Nanak Dev Ji says this, Ab Otahar, that I turn to God, Har Pramatma, Gajjyo Hoho Sahai, in the same manner that the elephant was sinking in the waters turned to that lotus flower and remembered God. That's why you need to know, if you read the translation, they're going to say that in the same way the elephant did. And you will know the story. That's the story of Gajinder. Inder means king. Gaj means the elephant king. And the elephant king had called, remembered God and when he was being submerged in the water. This isn't Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji talking about himself. He's talking about the Kashmiri Pandits. This is the same, same Bainti that I shared with you, that they shared in the Durbar of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And this is to see what the 10th Guru now will say. Because now Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, while he's in jail, he's going to pass on the Guruship to our 10th beloved Guru, Guru Gobind Singh Sache Padshah. So this, he tells the Sikh, Hey Gur Sikha, take this hukum. Hukam or Bani, Ekras Chalajami, Kidre Terina, don't stop, and I give you the blessing. Tu Akega Nehi, that you're not gonna get tired. Takega Nehi, Pokatre Tenu Lagegi Nehi, Uttar Lake, Vapas Chaldi Avi, that come quickly, time is of the essence, that bring back the response. Derna Lagavi, Same, the Kui Patani that we do not know about the times that we're in right now. The Sikh went. He went and he showed this to the Sangat. The Sangat was now consoled. And that's why we read this. Near the ending of Tan Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji, I should say the Po Galip uh, Ang of Guru Granth Sahib Ji. It consoles those, any individual that listens to Akhand parts or Saj parts, you will have to go through those sloks that Guru Maharaj wrote in the jail cell at that time. 
So then what happened is the response came. And the one slok of Guru Gobind Singh Ji that's within Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And Pratan Bira by Mani Singh Wali Bir will write Mahalla Dasva. But nowadays you don't find that in Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Par pehla likhya on the si Mahalla Dasva. And that's the one slok that comes and he says, Bal Hoa, Sachi Pasha, you have the strength. You do have the strength. Bandan Shote, the Hindu term does have the strength through you. And their bandhan, their entanglements, their troubles will all be cut away like that Sudarshan Chakra that cut away the tentacles of the elephant. Sabkich ho to and everything is possible when you're on the side of the Hindu term. Nanika Sabkich tumare haat mein, that I see everything within your hands. Everything is within your hands and you can turn this whole world around if you please. Every power sits in the grasp of your fingers. And it's through you that anything will be possible. And this, these are the words of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. And through the next three sloks, Naam Raheo, Sadhu Raheo, Raheo Gur Gobind. Because at that time, Maharaj was known as Guru Gobind Rai. After 1699, becomes Guru Gobind Singh. So Maharaj refers to him as Guru Gobind. Naam reo. Then Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji says, after I promise, even at the end of this universe, he says that God's name will still exist. Naam reo. The ones that worshipped God's name. Sadhu reo. Reo Guru Gobind. And Guru Gobind Singh Ji will remain. And that such Khandastan will remain. Right? And he promises the Gur Sikh Sangat, it's Guru Gobind Singh Ji that my Gurta Gaddi go, goes to. And at that time, at that time, Mata Gujarkur in her dream saw Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji come and walk around Guru Gobind Singh Ji and place the Nariya and the Panjapasya down and saw the Gurta Gaddi ceremony in her dream. And then is what we know and what we hear. Then what happened is they took Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji put him in an iron cage where you couldn't stand up because Kilesi, there's a sharp piercing uh, blades at the top and you couldn't sit down because Chonkadaini Bajdasi, that's how tight it was. And they put him where now Gurdwara sees Kanches, Jay Chandani Chonka, a chonk is a, a roundabout. It, it's a, where all cars go, go about in a circle when they're going in different directions. There is a spot of where these shihidiyah happened. And Pai Matidas was first. They took Pai Matidas, and I told you Pai Matidas and Satidas are brothers. They took Pai Matidas and they brought him and onu jakad ditta within, um, uh, within wood. They, they put him in wood and they brought a huge saw. And those that have seen the picture are familiar, but this is what it says in our Atiyas. Kita Hukam Orangene Orangzeb said this when he saw that he is not falling to any of the greed and the bribes and all those things that he's offering him, he's not turning his back on his religion. Kaharwala, he made a cruel command, and what was that? Isnu Fatya Vich Jadavai Devo, that a time within um, wood, put him within uh, wood on both sides, fence him in. Kafir din nahi kabool karda. This dis if this disbeliever doesn't accept our religion, ara seize pe iste chala devo. Then start sawing him in half. Ara chuk ke nere jala daaya. The butcher, the two individuals from Samane, the place is even said where they came from. They came close to start sawing him in half. They ask him that do you have like some uh, last desire that you want? You know how they ask people before they put him on the electric chair and people say, I want this last meal. Listen to my Matidas's last, last um, uh, wish. 
Mati Das ne akhya. This is what Mati Das said. Jalad taai towards the jalad. Icha anti ekko hi ek meri. There's only one desire that I have inside of mine. Mera muk us pinjre wal kar di. That turn my face and turn it towards my sign. My sign, my Pramatma. That iron cage that you have my Guru Sahib in, turn my face towards him. Ratte sehi jo je mukhna moran. Those people are filled with the color of love. Those people that don't turn their face away from Pramatma. And this was literally, they were turning, he wanted a face turned towards Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And he did. He turned his face towards Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. Jiste vich mein vasti jaan meri. Pai Mati Sita says, that's where my life resides. He's the source of my life. And let me, like a sunflower, look towards my son. And he did so. And then, Aara challu ga hatha vich te reya. He said that the ara, the saw is going to start going within your hands when you're going to start to cut me in half. And I promise you, this is all that's going to happen. Japji chaluga muk javan meri. And what will be recited on my lips is Japji Sahib. And Japji Sahib, jithe chal jam diya na, o pure karke hat deya. Paave, that antala sama ajave, if you did a bias of Japji Sahib, Maharaj's promise in the same way as by Mati Das is, it will complete even if they cut you in half. And when they got to his throat, where the worldly science will say that his voice box is cut, but what Atias tells us is that, and spiritual, um, the spirituality of Sikhi tells us, once they start cutting him, they cut him in do tote, they said, Jis da pog ni de de. the two individuals sit and they recite pog de slok. They felt they could hear coming from both of the sections, Japji Sahib, all the way until its end. They heard it through Pai Mati Das. And then what did you hear from Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji? He says, Tan Sikhi, Tan Sikhi. And there that's what comes about. Jirita Arna comes amongst the six. Sir jave ta jave, sadi sikhi siddhik na jave. That Arna comes from that. Let our head go. Basis tiya par sirin na diya. Our faith will always remain intact. So what if this body goes? And Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji's Bani says so. Sado etan mithya jano. Sado ehitan mithya jano. The sado, sikho, those people that are working towards sikhi, that listen up. E mithya jano. This body is imaginary. This matter is all going to go in the end. That etan mithya jano. But there is somebody that you have to recognize. Ya pitar. Inside of you, Ram bast hai. God resides. God resides as a soul inside of you. And God resides in you and connect with Him inside of you. This is Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji's Pavitra Bani. Then next by Dayaldas, who's about to get into a cauldron, a boiling water. And by Dayaldas starts to do her das. And he says, Tan Sri Guru Arjan Dev Ji Sache Paatsha, I remember you today. I remember the day they took you and put in you, put you in the hot boiling waters. Tan tabatra, you said, you said your body might be burning, but man, man shante hari naam se, but God's name is still cooling you from the inside, and you did not pass away within the the boiling water. You stuck to God's name. Now give me the strength of your sukhmani side and let me recite it, and then. Take me to your doors of such kind. He does such ardas. And when he does this ardas, he gets in the boiling water and just like a like a statue stays still. And from his mouth he recites all of Sukhmani Sahib and he breathes his last. And then the other brother of Mati Das by Sati Das, who would also he would do Mool Mantra the job, and they would wrap his body with cotton and tie him up in that cotton and light it up in fire. Where the fire is on the outside, but the sick would stay steadfast 
in the inside with God's name holding on to Mool Mantra. So, I'm coming to the conclusion which is Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji's own Shahidi, where now that Magar Vadi Panjvitri that I was talking to you about. The time has come and Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji is now two six remain with Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. And one of them is Baba Gurditta Ji. He says, Sache Paatshah, Metho nahi dekhya jana. I cannot, they haven't made me sheed yet, but if they make you sheed, I can't watch it again. I watched as Guru Hare Krishna Sahib Ji passed on. I don't want to see another Guru Sahib pass on before my eyes. Please give me leave and let me pass away in peace. So Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji said, then bol Vahe Guru. When he said Vahe Guru, the chains, the shackles opened and the door opened at night at midnight in the jail cell and he left and by Udaiji went he told by Udaiji the other Gursik that you go and tell everybody what happened you are a witness I needed you as a witness you go back to Punjab and Anandapur Sahib Udaiji would go back to Punjab Baba Burditta Ji from the family of Baba Buddha Ji would go and find the spot where Baba Buddha Ji had stopped in Delhi before he went to go find Guru Hargobind Sahib Ji in Gwalior de Kila and Delhi stopped at that spot he did his Kirtan Sola took a chadar over his head and he passed away that's one, one figure nobody mentions but I thought I'd point it out that Oda Enna Piyai see that but he just couldn't see it with his eyes now what Gursik can watch this anyways there are people that wanted to see Guru Maharaji Shiv. There are some people that didn't want to see Guru Maharaji Shiv. And then there are some people just wanting entertainment. That's the three types of people that crowd around that day when Guru Teg Bahadur Sahib Ji now goes and does Ishnan. That ku is still there. The ku and the, the, the wood, uh, the banyan tree that stood beside the ku is still, uh, the, the bark is still there kept at Gurdwara Siskanj. Maharaji does Ishnan. And then when he goes to sit down, the Kazi makes fun of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. He says, look, today I'm going to see fear in your eyes. They, you call Tegh Bahadur, what does it really mean? Tegh Bahadur. And this is part of the Tehas is not mentioned. Because people are skeptical. And skepticism didn't exist, exist so much in the Panth, but yet it does nowadays. But I do not have that skepticism, and I'm going to share it with you. Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji said that there is no Shastra in this world that can cut through me. And that, that is ordained by God Himself. Nainam, shastra, nainam Shadanti Shastrani. There will be no Shastra that will cut through me. And that Tegh Bahadur Maharaj Ji named me because that Bahadurta, I'm going to show you at this moment that your Tega, that you comes down to come cleave my head off, will not be able to cut me. They all start laughing because nobody's ever witnessed. And he says, if you want proof of this, wrap a piece of paper on that Tega's blade and put a piece of wire on top of it. Then what will happen is you'll see the rest. You wanted to see a miracle of God, you will see a miracle of God. But it's for you, for you people that have questioned my name. It's for you. So the Sayyid and the Qazi, they go and to do, do the deed. And they also ask Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, do you have any antam icha? Do you have any last request? Guru Maharaj Ji says, let me complete Japji Sahib. And when I do, I'll bow, bow my head. Because every Gursik, when you do finish your Bani, you bow your head as a Namaskar. Okay? That's just our Mariyada. If you guys don't do it, that's part of our Mariyada. Any Bani, you blow Wai Guruji Ka Khalsa, Wai Guruji Ki Fateh after Bani. And when I do, I'll expose the back of my neck and you bring it down at that time. Witnesses in that day said that as that Japji Saad was going on, they saw that the weather became disturbed. The weather became so disturbed that there's a, <coughs> there's a sandstorm that started and there's so much sand, it blocked out the sun and it became very dark. There's witness proof of people from that day, Muslims writing that they never even were able to witness the Shahidi of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. 
before the Shidi, one Gursik that had come from Punjab that Guru Gobind Singh Ji had sent with that messenger that took the Bani of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji back one state. And his name was Pai Jaita Ji. His job was to deal with the sheath bodies. He would disguise himself as a sweeper. And at night, he would take the bodies of Pai Mati Das, Pai Sati Das, Pai Dayal Das, and he would cremate the remainders. And then what he would do is he would take it and then um, take the ashes and place it into the Jamuna River that flows uh, next to D Delhi. And now he comes to Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji in the JSL. And he says that Maharaj Ji, that Maharaj Ji would give him this hukum. And he says, now, just wait. That day I want you to sit close, as close as you can get and wait. My head will come to you, into your choli, into your lap, into your chola. It will come. You prepare for it, take every preparation you need. My head will not touch the ground. Forget about the story of ever a head falling and rolling around on the ground. That never happened according to our Sikha Tiyas of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji's Pavan Sis, his holy head. And this is what happened. That night, the earth trembled. People know this. This is a Mariyada dating far back. It's even noted in Macbeth, written by Shakespeare, that when Macduff passed away as a righteous king, the earth trembled at that time, that Shakespeare even wrote. And now this is actually going to happen on this Tarti. That was a play. And that was the truth that Shakespeare believed in his own heart. And now what's going to happen is Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji, when his head comes off, what is going to happen is there's going to be so much disturbance in the weather. And that's Balke what happened. This Sayyid would come after the head is gone now. He had swung his sword. This is what he accounted to Aurangzeb. This is what he said to Aurangzeb when Aurangzeb wanted to know what happened. Because they wanted to take the head and place a spear down and put the head. And this is common. They did this with William Wallace in Scotland. They would take the head and different limbs of the body and place it on different parts to let people know this is what happens to people that come in rebellion. They would take the head and place it on the spear. But this did not happen. And this is to let you know that this is the power of God. That the fact that they couldn't find the head. And they had so many guards there. All holding the crowds back. And when the disturbance of the weather came. And the weather blocked out the sun. And it became black. And the Sayyid was told by the Qazi to bring down the sword. As the sword came down, it dung. The sword, it clanged against almost like an anvil. And the Qazi fell down and the sword fell out of his hands. And he's looking on the ground because he can't see. And he's looking for the sword. Meanwhile, he looks and the body's lying there. The body's lying there without the head. And where is the head? And the head has now come into the lap of Pai Jetta. And Pai Jetta that have been sitting there. There's such a pasha. Kei mang de on de potle. Kei mang de olad. And mera dekho, what kind of person am I? That man, Ardas Kitiya, there's such a pasha. Tor deceased safely comes into my lap. Oh, ap roi jan de si os vakit. But he had prepared the loom. He had taken cotton and had prepared a basket that he was gonna. Um, look like a person typically how they wear carry a basket on their head that go around selling products in India that's what he was going to try to come off as as he was going to leave the head came there it fell on the cotton and he couldn't look down he took the kapra and he started wrapping he had three sheets of kapra right just like Guru Granth Sahib Ji no Appa we take sheets and cover up Maharaj Sroop in the same way he took the sheets and he folded it over Guru Maharaj's Pavansis, placed it in the basket, had cotton all around it, and now he goes and he leaves. They're all looking for the head. The Sayyid looks down, finds his sword, his tega, and he sees no blood mark on his sword. He sees that it didn't even cut through the paper. And one person said, one person, 
This is an uh, Englishman who accounted of this atyas. He says, the Guru was summoned to Delhi and asked to uh, become a Muslim to prove himself by performing a miracle. He refused to do so and was put to uh, put to Shidi in 1675 after a lot of torture. The Guru wrote a hymn on a piece of paper. This hymn would be quoted by Guru Gobind Singh Ji later. And when his head was uh, cut off from the body, although the head was never found after the beheading, the only thing found on the piece of paper was this. Sis diya par sirin na diya. He said, I gave my head but I didn't give my religion or faith or what I believed in, my conviction. Now, Pai Jataji takes the seas and he makes his voyage towards Anandpur Sahib. And that's a story itself. So I'm going to end here. Sama both ho It's been uh, almost like two hours. Thank you for sitting patiently. There are K Padama that he did. And I'll tell you this much that when he would go to these different locations, they were of those locations where Gur Sikhs had been promised that Guru Maharaj Ji said, I'll come to your house. They were the remainder of those homes that Maharaj Ji had not come to yet. And those were the homes that Pai Jaita Ji automatically would come and he would need some rest. And he knew need some security that to be saved when he would see that there's police officers uh, coming behind him. So he would rest in those homes. And those homes were the places that they had asked Guru Maharaji to see Avni, Pavan, Nurani, Chehra, Apne Kare Vich, to see Dekha Chonea. And we want to see your resplendent, radiant, Pavan, holy head inside of our home. Kebri Eji Shabdavli Undisi. The request would be such now that Pavan Sis has come inside of their home. These kind of things would happen. He would get to Kirtapur Sahib. Guru Gobind Singh Ji would come and do Namaskar. And where there's a Gurdwara Sis Kanj in Delhi, there's a Gurdwara Sis Kanj in Anandpur Sahib. That's where the cremation of the head happened. The cremation of the body happened at Gurdwara Rakab Kanj to Lakhi Shah Manjara. And Gurdwara Sis Kanj in Anandpur Sahib is a very holy site. This place where Mohan Guru Gobind Singh Ji would leave Anandpur Sahib and go towards Chumkor Sahib, that's where he would do Ardas for the Khalsa Panth. He says, Panth Vase, Me Ujra, Man Chau Kanera. That let my Panth forever exist in this world, even if my family goes. I don't mind if my family goes in this world. And that's what Ardas Maharaj would do at Gurdwara Sis Kanj and Anandpur Sahib, where the Sis cremation happened. Okay, so forgive me if I made any mistakes. One last thing I will share with you, which is also written in Aradas. No, Aurangzeb couldn't exist in Delhi that day after. Why? He would suffer from insomnia and fears. And it's written, Aurangzeb mela me sove, bar bar uthe byakal hove. Why? Because he would see the spirit of Pai Mati Das standing on his chest. And he went to a place called Aurangabad, named after him, obviously. He would go to Aurangabad. So, this is a, a brief synopsis of Tan Sri Guru, uh, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. I can't do justice to his life. My job is not to, to provide a scholarly manner of a speech or a lecture on Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji. I forever wanted to be something that brings about and inspires some praise inside of your heart. That's the whole purpose of why I wanted to share this with you in the very days that all we're going to see in the coming days is shahidi upon shahidi upon shahidi because we see it with the Shote Sahib Jadeh, Badde Sahib Jadeh and all the Gur Sikhs, Achamkor Sahib, Chali Mukte, Sabkos Hun On Lagesh, Takriban Asara Meena Shi Danda Hunda, all the people that give their life believing in this Panth. And what they believed is when Guru, when um, Banda Singh Bahadur would say that um, inspire his troops to go to Fatehgarh Sahib, he would say that they could Guru Tegh Bahadur the sees Sade Agya. And look, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib's head is right before us. Meaning that they will get inspired. That look at Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib. How is life lit up 
the sahibs are they on that thanda bridge that whole night mata gujar kor would sna the katha of guru teg bahadur sahib ji and then they would go and give their shahidi right in the hits that they would uh, pile up in front of them inspiration is endless that guru teg bahadur sahib ji gave so please forgive me if i made any mistakes that was today's presentation normally what i do is a powerpoint presentation but some of medical assignment see so i i chose to just write things down and bring it before you if you have any questions feel free to ask mai on the i'll end uh, the lecture why guruji ka khalsa why guruji ka